Don in London, hello. It's uh, June 10th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour and becoming sober one day at a time, courtesy of a lot of help from other people. And where did I get that help? Well, I got it from family, friends, community, medical people and a fellowship, the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And one thing I know about AA, it's full of unique, authentic people who speak where they will about their own recovery. So I've been doing videos on recovery for a while. And recovery is just one day at a time, simply that. I don't have to use my willpower anymore. I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to drink today. And that took a long time, after many, many years of thinking I ought to stop drinking so much to the point where eventually, after many difficult times, drink got me and I was a 24-7 drinker and faced no life at all. So the Fellowship of AA gave me a way to live and practice 12 steps, 12 principles of living well. And those principles <coughs> excuse me, actually give me freedom to be me. And uh, I'm just doing a couple of reflections which I've put out there today. And the first one is, love people, hate their behaviour, with a question mark. Can I love people and hate their behaviour? Well, I learned to hate myself for being weak and unable to stop drinking. And whatever I did, it was always about overcoming a weakness and relying on willpower. Willpower kept me silent, isolated and determined and kept me drinking because I thought I had to do it myself. If I couldn't do this on my own, what, what would people think of me? I didn't think, I don't think I ever thought it out loud, but I certainly felt it inside. Fellowship taught me love and forgiveness, humanized me and freed me to start over. So by the time I became a 24 seven drinker, lost everything, uh, my home was a park bench or my living room was my head. And it always told me I was never good enough. But these days I've learned everyone is good enough that we can learn to love again. And what fellowship did for me, it taught me that I could be loved long enough by other people through fellowship and friendship without conditions to be a human again. And in the process, I stopped drinking, went to meetings. What I saw was what I got on a daily basis. So practicing these principles in all I do helps me learn. It's always fellowship and wisdom outside me which usually solves the big issues in my life. Better to get feedback on how to do it. And the second one I put out there, hurt people hurt people. In other words, people who have been hurt learn how to hurt others and it's either consciously or subconsciously. Watching a survivor of violence interview, a survivor of violence interview on the TV this morning describe how they faced their attacker and found forgiveness is truly remarkable. This is not always the outcome. I do know I had a complete breakdown because of bullying in my adult life. A bully nearly made me a bully. Hurt people do hurt people. Today I see the breakdown became a breakthrough. Only took a de decade to get there. And probably longer because all through my life I, I stuck up for the those who were downtrodden, stuck up for the right thing to do, felt I had principles of open, honest, willing and fair dealing inside me. Those were my ways of living. And when I met people who weren't that way, I wanted to persuade them to my point of view through reason, logic and maybe emotional appeals, although I kept my emotions very much in check, relying on rules, regulations, law, obedience, what was right and what was wrong and never realising inside the bully is a person who has been bullied in some way. After all, how, how on earth did they learn how to be a bully? It's not something which just resides without nurturing, because there is a bully in all of us. There is a killer, a murderer, a lover, a peaceful person. All of those things are open to us, and it does depend on our life experiences and how we've been treated. But there is a good conscience somewhere in there. And what I've learned in fellowship, no matter what happens, if a person can stay sober to find out who they are, 
and how they really want to be, most people turn to the good of living rather than the, the bad of living. So for me today, steps in practice, the 12 step program works, what follows are some daily reflections and eventually the step 6 video which comes from the 12 and 12. Switch off at any time when you've had enough. Don in London, hello. June 10th, my video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. All about AA literature and how it helps me on a daily basis. I am one voice amongst many, so many voices need to be heard to find what works for you in recovery from addiction to substance or behaviour. Mine was alcohol and my behaviour equally addictive work, relationships, you name it, I could be there at extremes. So, AA helps me on a daily basis and for June 10th in this book, <coughs> excuse me, Daily Reflections, it says here, impatient, try levitating. We reacted more strongly to frustrations than normal people, as Bill sees it, page 111. Impatience with other people is my is one of my principal failings. Following a slow car in a low passing lane or waiting in a restaurant for the check drives me to distraction. Before I give God a chance to slow me down, I explode and that's what I call being quicker than God. That repeated experience gave me an idea. I thought if I could look down on these events from God's point of view, or indeed just the overall view of what is going on, I might better control my feelings and behaviour. In other words, I'm just one of many. I tried it, and when I encountered the next slow driver, I levitated and looked down on the other car upon myself. I saw an elderly couple driving along, happily chatting about their grandchildren. Also have the power of uh, mind. I don't know, maybe. They were followed by me, bug-eyed and red of face, who had no time schedule to meet anyway. I looked so silly that I dropped back into reality and slowed down. Seeing things from God's angle of vision can be very relaxing. So in other words, impatience, gosh, so true. Customer service, Don service, well, just being in service is better to know I'm my right size in the world. I have no greater importance than any other person. And when I'm not sure about that, the serenity prayer helps me. To God a good conscience of your understanding. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today. Don in London, hello, and it's 10th of June 2009. My, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour and uh, yeah. I'm recovering one day at a time. I need to remind myself always about this, that I'm in recovery one day only. My life goes on, uh, the days seem to speed up as I get older, I don't know if that's a common trait, I suspect it is, but with a, an, a clear head, or as clear as it can be, without the befuddlement of, ad of addiction, my addiction was alcohol. Uh, and behaviour which was self-obsessed and going round and round in circles trying to be perfect either at work or doing the gym or being in relationships you name it I try to strive for perfection and these days I'm striving to learn who I am and I'm glad about that because it means I'm human very human indeed so what helps me keep sober well family do community society civilization as we know it uh, as they say on Star Trek uh, whatever life is, we don't know what it is, but it's life as we, it's not as we know it. And that's simply me learning a day at a time. I don't know, I think I was ignorant of my, about my situation for a long, long time. For us to actually understand addiction, we have to actually maybe experience it. Because if you're not an addict, why on earth would you want to know? And that's where some of the stigma, if you like, the self-prejudice about addiction is. So first we, we want never to know that we are an addict, probably remaining ignorant probably till death and then thinking well well I don't know what we think or feel when we're dead but on the way there 
there's great despair, desolation and disappointment in addiction and uh, I suffered that quite a lot and this self prejudice kept me away from recovery for a long long time because I just didn't think I was good enough I had clinical depression and a whole range of other behavioral problems to do with just trying to stay well stay on the planet basically and I cannot remember the number of times I did not want to wake up not actively commit suicide but certainly I didn't want to wake up so it's the soft option if you like for addicted people uh, not to have to think or feel any more so to get into recovery is rather a difficult task and for those who do uh, it remains a day at a time exercise and the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous helps me daily connect with people who understand what it's like to stay in recovery because we share our experience strength and hope and I go to AA meetings uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, Anonymous meetings here in London and there are 720 a week apparently so I used to drink most days <coughs> most days I go to AA and for an hour or an hour and a half I get to hear what other people are doing with their lives and I can share as well what I'm doing with my life I don't share about these videos because they're nothing to do with AA and uh, AA is full of unique authentic people so I cannot speak for them nor would I want to and I don't speak for AA either I just talk about how it helps me on a daily basis but the preamble which is shared at every meeting I go to at the beginning helps a new person and the oldest person in sobriety there in the room because we need to be brought into the same place the same place of understanding in the here and now uh, sometimes called the spiritual, spiritual connection is reality without filters or denials so what does AA say about itself in the preamble? It says this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And the reason I say that every time on uh, my videos is, so if, when people take them out of sequence, they know where I'm coming from. I'm talking about my experience, strength and hope, which is based on fellowship life, if you like, and having a life outside fellowship. So if one hour in 24 is devoted to keeping in recovery, and then the other 23, well, I'm lucky because I don't drink a day at a time. And that's the gift. It's the gift of life. And uh, for me, lots of things are happening. And um, connections to old friends, because of YouTube and uh, Facebook which is quite startling and also um, disconnection sometimes because it's just the way life is so sometimes life is going alright and sometimes it's not and sometimes we upset people unintentionally and uh, I guess for many years I was doing that by my drinking behaviour first I was upset because life just didn't seem worth living and then the rest of the world whoever knew me would see the perfect person who kept everybody else out from the real me inside and the real me inside was a very small boy who didn't really understand life too well and had never grown up and feared a lot of things always wondering what would be around the next corner and always feeling like I needed to look over my shoulder for the people with the knives to stab me in the back I don't know if it was quite that paranoid all the time but there were some good times in there too otherwise I wouldn't have done it would I so in the fellowship we have uh, literature like this daily reflections and uh, I'll try and cover what it says in these AA has a 12 step program and in the daily reflections it covers one step per month and the 12 steps are about uh, taking adopting a new attitude to life and new behavior so getting rid of the old attitude of poor old me uh, less than don't want to live more of a bit of courage faith and confidence that life can work out and it can be interesting and I can be connected that's what the 12 steps help me do and it's when it's an action program we don't follow it dogmatically to some other person's uh, tune if you like or their way of looking at the world we find our own outlook and how the 12 steps help us authentically and uniquely to be ourselves so it says here June 10th um, this is the sixth month and the sixth step is all about sorting out where, where we need to develop better attitudes and behavior 
which we can utilize and uh, not relying on self-will, self-obsession. So it says here, impatient, question mark, try levitating. We reacted more strongly to frustrations than normal people. Impatience with other people is one of my principal failings, following a slow car in a no passing lane or waiting in a restaurant for a check drives me to distraction. Before I give God a chance, or good conscience, or the world, to sh slow me down, I explode, and that's what I call being quicker than God. That repeated, repeated experience gave me an idea. I thought if I could look down on these events from God's point of view, it's like a helicopter view, I might better control my feelings and behaviour, because that means I'm right size, because everybody's wanted to get their check and pass and all the rest of it. I tried it and when I encountered the next slow driver, I levitated and looked down on the other car and upon myself. I saw an elderly couple driving along, happily chatting about their grandchildren. They were followed by me, bug-eyed and red of face, who had no time schedule to meet anyway. I looked so silly that I dropped back into reality and slowed down. Seeing things from God's angle of vision can be very relaxing. Or from my bicycle on the King's Road when uh, a motorist uh, drives right up to the very edge where the, light, the lights are red so that the pedestrians cannot pass and uh, somebody knocked on their window yesterday and said why don't you move back and the driver looked as if they were horrified how dare they and this lady had a pram with a child in it and very sensibly she put, went back to the edge and uh, onto the sidewalk or pavement and uh, let it go but the driver in the car zoomed off as fast as they could as the lights were just going to amber you know what people really are very impatient when there's nothing to rush at except another bloody car queue and <coughs> one of my favourite pictures which I took in the King's Road is this one and you know it sums up a lot uh, a fairly ancient couple a man just walking behind his wife I suspect because they look very similar in their outfit, outfits and it's the reason why it's one of my favourite pictures is it says to me, the lady's saying, come on you old goat, get on with it. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people are told about life, pull yourself up, um, put on a brave face and get on with it and don't be such a wimp around things to do with addiction. But because if you, if you don't know what addiction is and you don't understand it as a disease and an ailment which is trying to kill us and self-prejudice runs riot, you know, we put ourselves down and I've heard it said in many occasions that I would never go out with somebody in the fellowship because they're mad. Well, at least sanity is restored on a daily basis if we're lucky. And, you know, for me today, I'm just gently trying to understand how life works. And that try levitating bit, which is looking at the whole situation, not just mine. It, it's suggested it's God's view, but in fact it's a good conscience view. So when I say the serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. I guess it's really wisdom in the moment and knowing the difference. Don in London, and it's June 10th, 2008, round about half past seven in the morning. It's one of those days when I've been up for hours already, and uh, so are the bin men clearing up outside, some noises off. Promises in AA, and uh, beyond our wildest dreams. Things which maybe I was sceptical about. Beyond my wildest dreams, what were my dreams when I was drinking, and uh, how self-centred were they? How full of ego and fear, and putting on a brave face? I'm trying to earn enough money so nobody could find me, the real me, or I didn't have to find out who I was. And it seems to me like uh, the last four years has been all about finding my identity. Who am I? And we're going to keep on asking this question over and over through our lives. Who am I today? Well, I'm Don in London. I do little videos on recovery. And uh, it's all about recovering or being in recovery from addiction to alcohol for me and there is every sort of substance you can imagine that we can become addicted to uh, drugs alcohol chocolate you know sugar sugar is a good addiction nicotine cigarettes cocaine whatever you want to call it skunk I don't know I don't know the names for all the drugs that people take or the variations and combinations all that I know about these things is it pushes us out to the extremes of behavior 
either to the good of behavior or to the bad of behavior if we keep on going too long and uh, you know where am I? I'm uh, a, a happy customer at the moment Life Beyond My Wildest Dreams is living in reality in the day and uh, AA has helped me do that AA is not everything to me but it sure makes sure that I can cope well with most of what goes on on a daily basis and even I, even, my, even I, this person doing all these videos daily I have, I hit brick walls quite often running in them, running into them and wonder why I feel hurt and normally the brick wall is inside my head and not a physical one anyway, what about AA? I don't speak for AA by the way I'm just a person who goes there and is part of the fellowship so this is what it says Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety and I guess, you know, we alcoholics probably have other addictions which we uh, return to when we stop drinking and it can be in terms of our behaviour with others or substances which we try and replace alcohol, alcohol with and uh, I think chocolate was a good one for me or eating as healthily as I could or going to the gym and behaving like a madman on all these different machines and when I walked up the street I felt like crap so you know we can't get away from ourselves no matter what we do and we need to find balance in there somewhere and I think I'm getting there uh, I'm in a relationship it's proving to be a challenge for me and my beliefs because my beliefs haven't changed and things around courage, faith and confidence to be doing the right thing on a daily basis become paramount and taking account of another person well, we must and we do and we don't live in isolation you know, as Freud said life is about inclusion, choices and love those three elements are so important to us and uh, the reason why I know that is I used to help people by giving them a personality questionnaire to try and identify their needs and wants regarding inclusion, choice and love and that can be taking a lead in those things or being on the back backstop following the lead in those things or as we get interdependent with people we, we let the inclusion, inclusion choices and love flow and one thing we need to watch out for is trying to control or manipulate it to our way of thinking and feeling because when we're in society or with another person we need to take great care that we're, we're not only resolute in our understanding of what is possible and what is not possible it's also taking account of another person's point of view and honouring it five minutes in I better do the reading if, if I don't do it now I'll forget and uh, I had to, I had to apologise profusely to somebody last night for my behaviour last Wednesday when I cross-shared in a meeting of AA and I went and saw them and said I really feel I owe you an apology and they said they really felt I owed them an apology and by the end of our conversation we had resolved how to be and you know it's mutual respect, mutuality in all these things and I learn by my mistakes never perfect, always progress anyway coming on to June 10th from this book Daily Reflections it says impatient question mark try levitating we act, reacted more strongly to frustrations than normal people as Bill sees it page 111 it goes on to say impatience with other people is one of my principal failings following a slow car in a no passing lane or waiting in a restaurant for the check drives me to distraction before I give God or good conscience a chance to slow me down I explode and that's what I call being quicker than God or good conscience that repeated experience gave me an idea I thought if I could look down on these events from God's point of view that is me without my good conscience and my ego I might get better control of my feelings and behaviour I tried it and when I encountered the next slow driver I levitated and looked down on the other car and upon myself I saw an elderly couple driving along happily chatting about their grandchildren they were followed by me bug-eyed and red-faced 
who had no time schedule to meet anyway. I looked so silly that I dropped back into the reality and slowed down. Seeing things from God's angle, angle of vision can be very relaxing. And really what it's saying is, people get in our way, or we think they do, we feel they do, but they don't. They're just going about their business. And uh, just because we're impatient to get somewhere, means that we're not living in the moment and now. We're living in uh, the future. And we're angry with the present because it's, it's, it's conspiring against us. Anyway, as Bill sees it, page 166, fear no evil. I'll just flash that up again, as Bill sees it. Oh, something new with my camera. Fear no evil. Though we, though we of AA find ourselves living in a world characterized by destructive fears as never before in history, we see great, great areas of faith and tremendous aspirations towards justice and brotherhood. Yet no prophet can presume to say whether the world, uh, world outcome will be a blazing destruction or the beginning under God's intention of the brightest era yet known to mankind. And the thing is, we're all moving at different rates. I'm sure we AAs will comprehend this scene. In microcosm we have experienced this identical state of terrifying uncertainty, each in his own life. In no sense pridefully we can say that we do not feel the world outcome, whichever course it may take. This is because we have been enabled to deeply feel and say, we shall feel no evil, thy will not ours be done. And, you know, it is the common good which I reflect, and the common good conscience which I hope will be, I suppose, energised in everybody, but it will never be at the same time, because we're all at different ages, we're in different civilizations and societies, and different rules apply to the boundaries that we have. And even in a a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my girlfriend now, we can get our wires crossed and we get a little bit of fear and worry and we go back and think, are we good enough? Or why isn't it all perfect or straight away? And the answer is it's just progress and not perfection. And uh, alcoholics in recovery realize that a lot of their behavior is consistent with being on feet pillock or numbskull or I don't know, deranged in some way, wanting it to be perfect when in fact it can't be. Anyway, 24 hour day book. I suddenly have just enough time to say what it says here. If we had some, if we had had some moral, religious or spiritual training, we were, be we were better prospects for AA. When we reach the bottom, at this crucial moment when, when we're thoroughly licked, we turn in instinctively to whatever decency is left in us. We call upon whatever reserves of morality and faith are left down deep in our heart. Have I had this spiritual experience? And the answer is yes, on a daily basis, because life, life is phenomenal. And especially when you're looking through a, a clinical depression, it takes on a sparkly and unpleasant hue, I guess. But when the moments are up, or somewhere in the middle, we start to learn to take life as it comes, equally to others, and the equal of others, just one day at a time. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. 
So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step. And also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD. An epic poem written... Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, 
and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then asked a, a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AA's have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their, best, their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol 
the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness abstinence chastity patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life for nature and God alike abhor suicide but most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all every normal person wants for example to eat to repro reproduce to be somebody in society in the society of his fellows and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give him give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence, evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render as, com as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our di instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behavior can be an addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society this does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was a few of them may be but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement and that's the game progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail We'd, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done but well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labeled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonized by the chronic pain of envy 
or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be. What we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say? so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds. And even whilst staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. and. Uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction, else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for pr procrastination, which is really slow in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, 
But even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects, as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no. So we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long term meaning he could say how very easy sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely of course this won't do such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation at the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no, never, our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because 
you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defined or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings the virtues which is all about step seven I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step 6 and 7 so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel okay given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good 
Step 6, June. Step 7, July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start. Enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going. Or I could have fear, very facing an ego in my heart. It's as life is. And it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again. Freedom to choose life. Life on life's terms. Always a unique and authentic path for each person. And in fellowship with one similarity, a desire to be sober today. The Serenity Prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.